Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. Bismillahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salati wa salam ashraf al mursaleen. Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad al Mustafa sallallahu alaihi wa sallam. Bimadadakum min nazarakum Sayyidi ya Rasul Kareem ya Habib al Azim. An abdik al ajeez al da'eef wa miskeen al zalim wa jahr wa ati Allah ati Rasul wa ulul amri minkum. An abdik al ajeez al da'eef wa miskeen al zalim wa jahr. And but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. InshaAllah asking to go through some questions and answers for the people who are following on online inshaAllah. What do we got? Did they go up on my page? That's live on my page? That's live on my page? Yeah, inshaAllah. Which one is it? Green? Let's go. Sayyidi, when one is at a stage where he sees shaitan transferred in human form, sent as a test, what is best approach? Run. When they disturb you in public, what is the best approach? <laughs> Anytime you see shaitan run, that Any type of negativity that people carry, we try to stay away from. The energy that you build within yourself, the practices that Allah give for you to do to build your connection and focus on the connection. Sounds like I'm there too. So not to focus on seeing a shaitan in someone and that could be imaginary and it could be real but to focus on the positive and building your energy, building your practices and not focusing on the negativity. And any time you feel a negative energy is to be cautious. The reason for the sensitivity within the heart is to live a life of caution. If you go somewhere in the woods and you feel uncomfortable and you keep going, something wrong with you because you're putting yourself in a place that's very dangerous. So means the heart is, is a receiving and a sharat. You practice, you build your energy, you build your sensitivity. Then you take yourself to an environment that could have a lot of wild energy all around you. If your heart is telling you that you're uncomfortable and you begin to feel an immense amount of negativity means it's a sign for you not to be there. That don't put yourself in that type of environment, there's a protection for you somewhere else. So it means all of these are the practices in understanding guidance. That we talked many times before, if you go to the mall and you're not feeling good with that energy because it's a sign from Allah don't be there, it's draining your energy. So then you begin to not only take the advice of the shaykhs but through your training your heart is going to be trained on how to advise you. And that's the ultimate is the shaykh begin to teach the student for you to develop what Allah wants you to have within yourself is your internal guidance system. And that's a part of what we call faith. When you begin to believe, when you begin to practice and you believe in your practices, Allah makes it to be real for you and that becomes the reality of faith. So this ilm, the knowledges of reality, ilmu yaqeen. And the ayn and the practices of visualizing and sensing these realities, it becomes a haqq for people. Now because that haqq is developing, you don't want to look at everything bad and say, oh look this is a shaitan, this one's a shaitan, this one's… everyone is a shaitan and everyone has a shaitan assigned Allah says, we have assigned upon every ins a jinn from the shayateen who his purpose is to distract you in life. 
Now you're going to give in to him and follow him or you're going to follow Allah and that becomes this game of life that we live. So it wasn't supposed to be free from shayateen, it was supposed to be that you don't listen to shayateen, inshaAllah. How will I know my shaykh and how do I seek his guidance? When do I know it's time? <laughs> See when the, the student is ready the shaykh will appear. And I think we talked about a more easier understanding is that Allah laid the track down. That this creation is not something random, Allah has laid all the track. You know when you want to build the choo-choo train you put all the tracks where you want it to go, everywhere it's supposed to go. He's already laid the path for every insan where the ideal path, what that person would go through, all their experiences, if they would go through spiritual experiences, if they would meet towards guidance, all of that has already been written and that path has been laid. Then Allah created your form. As a result that destiny has already been written through a series of incidences in life and destiny Allah takes the student to become a seeker. Whom Allah guides is truly guided and there's no guidance without Allah that nobody can guide anybody or bring anyone to guidance if not Allah writing it. So it means then in my life all of my experiences were meant to prepare me for a day when I would be ready and I would want the guidance within myself that I had guided myself towards disaster and I had made all my choices that were wrong because I was driving the train and trying to make a left when it's going right, make a right when it's going left. And those whom Allah guides they have similar understandings, they've been through many difficulties so that they stop trying to drive their own train. And when they reach to an understanding of submission, I'm just going to submit Ya Rabbi, I want the guidance, I want to reach towards this reality. Then what does that mean? The shaykh will appear. Along the way there may be banded shaykhs that you're trying to reach your destiny and somebody drops on your tracks and says, you come with me and you're going to go through many sour experiences. So the day that you're again really ready you'll understand guidance. Some people have come directly to the shaykh and they were thinking everywhere they go there's going to be beatific salawats playing, food laid out for you in abundance and every type of nice talk with a happy smile. That you're lucky but most have experienced all the crazy different types of associations, different centers and all of the sour experiences. So that in a state you're ready, oh I've tasted everything sour, I've heard all their garbage. At that point your heart is ready when Allah want to send you to sunshine, you know because you've been through the rain and you know exactly what sunshine is, you know what that beauty is, you know what that fragrance is and at that time your heart tells you. If the teaching of that shaykh and you're ready and you think you're ready and the teaching of that shaykh resonates within your heart means then there's a bond happening. And we talked about that before but that's a very deep subject. The bond that is happening is based on the reality of your form, energy and sound. Your form is existing by the power of an energy and when you break this energy down it's a sound. And this sound is not the audible sound only of our tongue. This sound that Allah wants and is understanding is being conveyed is a resonance on your soul. There's a, a sound that you make, 
that's different. There's a sound that your soul makes, that from Allah's power oceans. And Allah makes the soul of that guide because He lifted them, dressed them, lifted them, lifted them, the resonance of their soul has a frequency. Let's say 90, 92.1, the frequency of that shaykh's soul. It's resonating from Allah's power oceans. When you come into their ocean of vibration because the shaykh's soul is everywhere. Soul is not something people understand. If he releases his soul he can hold the moon and the sun in his hand. The vastness of the soul is not something small. Allah's creation is something of an immense size. It's not contained in this little body that is in a little earth, in a little galaxy, in the midst of billions of galaxies. The vastness and the power of the soul something unimaginable. And when Allah want to release the frequency of that soul means the soul of those guides they're out. Allah don't deem them to be dead, they're very much alive. Their whole life was to surrender, surrender, surrender. When Allah brought them into surrender, Allah gave them Hayat al-Barzaq. That the reality of their Barzaq reality, the dress of their Malakut is dressing them. As a result their soul is free, their associations filled with their soul, wherever their heart their soul is flowing. Anyone watching them is calling and drawing a portion of the soul to be present with them. I mean you put all these teachings like a tasbih, like beads together. As soon as you look at their picture their soul is right there present with you because the soul is not one, it's a light. They have these little games of lasers where you hit the laser and it goes in a thousand directions. And a laser with just a little battery is able to do that. Imagine the power oceans of Allah Means then their soul, their light is moving everywhere. Imagine then the frequency of that soul with what frequency and energy that soul is resonating and it comes into your presence. Then you open the oceans of attuning. As soon as his soul comes into your presence it begins to attune your soul to his frequency and that's what guidance is. Guidance is not through your nafs, that's the playing part. If they had to guide humanity through the two eyes and two ears and the nose that doesn't listen, the guidance and we would all be dead. Nobody would listen, everybody more interested in, in the hamburger and french fries, drive through. If Allah talking about there's no guidance except through Allah's guidance and permission, those whom been granted a light have a light, those whom have no light but not granted a light have no light, means Allah saying that these guides, this reality has a power. As soon as it enters in it begins to dress your light. Change the frequency of your light to resonate at their frequency. And as a result of resonating at your frequency the true guides, imitated guides that's like plastic fruit. They can sit and nobody will be changed. They can sit for years and nobody changes. Real guidance they can sit for five minutes and begin to change everyone. Right? The master of that was who? Sultanul Awliya, Imam Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani, we said many times before. It says, he was given a secret from the light of Sifatul Rahman that when you came into his presence he would throw that light into your heart and you went back and immediately you grew a full beard, you became full sunnah and 40 people following your way. That was a power That's the, and that power even more powerful now because the physicality got out of the way, the sickness and limitation of the physicality went away. His soul is much more powerful now. 
So means just he says, think about me for five minutes my soul is entering towards you. It's coming with my frequency, my resonance and I begin to change all of your imperfections so that you resonate on my light. And that's when Grand Shaykh Kazin talks one way to you but it's haqqaiq is of a deeper understanding. He said, sit with us for five minutes, I take you to my maqam. What does that mean? Like I'm taking you to an elevator and I'm taking you somewhere? It's that my soul will dress your soul. What Allah put upon my soul, it will come with every truth to every falsehood of yours and shatter it. And when it shatters it, it rebuilds it back as a duplicate of His own light. Means He takes the frequency of that insan if they were at 10 and he was at 10,000, he raises the frequency of their soul like 10,000. Puts it in a trust, Allah puts that reality in a trust because they're not capable of handling that reality on their physicality. Many things are happening, all of guidance is happening behind the scenes, it's not the guidance in the front. But as a result of these lights and these emanations coming upon the soul, dressing upon the soul, it begins to completely change the form of that person in which they begin to exhibit all of that nurani characteristics. Naqshbandiyat al-Aliya and the students of Sultan al-Awliya man Shaykh Abdul Faiz al-Daghestani, Sultan al-Awliya Muhammad Nazim Haqqani and all the subsequent shaykhs after that, they have an exact characteristic. Anywhere on earth you go you'll know this is Shaykh Nazim's Naqshbandi students. They have a beautiful light upon them, they carry the sunnah upon themselves, they carry this love within their heart and in their character and their light. Even you may find problems in their actions but the light and the trust that was deposited upon them is of a very unique ocean of realities. So it means guidance is from the soul. When we're trying to teach people to meditate and contemplate just so that we can get an understanding of the drop of the depth of that reality. So that we appreciate what guidance is and that we appreciate the ability to try to excel and improve ourselves. But in last days because of the extent of testing and the immensity of difficulties upon the earth, many people will be hit by a test and run away, run away. So you begin to see many people leave and you begin to see many people, new people come. Because as we begin to approach that reality closer and closer, these are the difficulties of testing. One will be tested and will begin to lose completely their faith and leave and we pray that Allah just save us from that door. Others will be tested and completely gain their faith. And that's why the hadith of Prophet in last days one will go to sleep with belief and wake up with disbelief. He went to sleep as a believer, woke up as an unbeliever. What happened in that night time? And one who will sleep as a disbeliever wakes as a believer. InshaAllah just keep us awake. <laughs> Something's wrong in the sleep process, uh, uh, that's the scary part. But alhamdulillah Allah dress us, bless us and, and, and teach us more and more the understanding of light and the reality of light and what's happening in the grave, Hayat al-Barzakh they asked the other night but which is an ocean of understanding and the realities of what's happening with this world of light. Why do we need to make this connection now? So that this light and this perfection can be done in a wakeful state. The separation of body and, and soul is not an easy process and if people are waiting for having that separation in the grave, that's what they call the torment of the grave because the two friends are not separating. But if all your life you took a path of being crushed and being tested and being tested and being tested, of course your body and soul have separated. As a result of that separation you feel the emanations of the zikr. You feel the barakah and the blissfulness of the zikr becomes like a, a paradise garden for you, inshaAllah.
Yes, Sayyidi, are there unintentional actions that can cause the student a disconnection with the shaykh? Unintentional? You know like a legal contract you have to define unintentional. <laughs> so but uh, the leaving of a, of a shaykh's hand is, is very difficult if not impossible. That when Allah destines guidance it's again from an ocean of, of malakut. That what Allah has written for guidance is going to be guided. And the hand that is guiding is not the hand of an ego but is the hand of, of the Divine guidance that come from Allah to the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad to the ulul am who are inheriting. So means the actual guidance in the ladina yubayyunaka inna ma yubayyunullah. The bias always only to Allah there are intermediaries in the process. The bayah is always to Allah Why? Because Allah is the only one who can give guidance and destine you for guidance. Then when Allah the one want to give you guidance sends the ishara to Sayyidina Muhammad because this is a creation that you're in charge of. Tell your creation this one will be guided. Then the nazar of Prophet begin to hit upon that servant. And then he dispatches from the station of the ulul amr, the people of authority means their, their, their steadfast station is in the heart of Prophet in the soul. Those souls then are dispatched with a command that this one Allah has assigned guidance for. That for malakut is locked, it's already been written. Now does your physicality and your nafs understand that guidance? And was it written for your physicality and your nafs to actually meet your guide? Some yes, some no. Some were not physically guided in this world. They never met the physical guide but they have been guided and they'll reach their destination. Can they do something completely by accident to break their connection? No, inshaAllah no. It's not so petty that you make a mistake and they get angry and say, get out now and take your five dollars with you. <laughs> it's not cheap like that. It, it has an immense Divine grace. But when you intentionally keep doing things wrong, you're taking your hands off. Means you're going a thousand feet high and you're trying to cut them but in actuality shaitan is convincing you to cut yourself. So there are some wonderful blooper videos that the guy is, is cutting a tree and he has a chainsaw and you're looking at him cut that tree and it's like, can anyone tell this man that if he cuts a little bit more he's actually going to fall? And you see the guy with a chainsaw on a big tree and he's cutting the wrong part of the tree. If he clears that cut he's going to fall. And that's all shaitan wants in our life. Keep telling you, cut it, cut it, cut the relationship. As soon as you cut that relationship, that fire is in that blessing no longer can reach to you. And a life of difficulty and hardship. And we gave a, a, a talk on Allah says, hold fast to your tariq. Istiqama fi tariqatat. It's from Surah Yasik, isn't it? Hold firm onto your tariqah. Hold firm until Allah dress you from oceans of abundance, waters of abundant flowing oceans. Means that hold fast through all your testing so that these blessings and these fires, these dressings can dress upon you. You don't lose the bayad but you lose the emanations and the blessings because you've given yourself to the commands and to the whims of shaitan. Until Allah if again wants to bless you, guides you. And then we talked before guidance is like a magnet. When Allah wants the servant to be guided, He puts your polarity and your magnetism to that shaykh. So who can make somebody a magnet? Allah Who can make your heart to be attracted to that shaykh that I want to follow that shaykh? That is only from Allah and that is also the reality of love. You can't force anybody to love you. 
and you can't be forced to love anyone because Allah is the one whom brings that magnetism. If Allah sends this magnetism you find your, your entire being attracted to that reality. Every time you make a bad characteristic the polarity of your magnet is shifting, right? So how did we change the polarity in, in magnetism in school? Because it was really bad in science. You hit the magnet, right? You take a magnet, if you hit it with an iron rod you can reverse the polarity of the charge. So shaitan's role is what? Keep hitting us with a bad character so this person that we're attracted to is no longer attraction because he hit us the polarity change, you're no longer attracted to them, you're actually being repelled. You can't stand the presence of that person, you begin to repel away from them. Allah's rahmah when is that you're guided and He flips the magnet again and brings you back. Because He's not going to let shaitan to, to win. Shaitan test you, make you to go like that, reverse your polarity. But when Allah says, you are guided. He reverses it again and you keep coming back, you keep coming back, you keep coming back. By that reality the testing can occur because if every time you tested the students and they got angry and ran away there would be no tariqah. But because Allah reverses that charge and still makes you to be attracted to them you keep coming, you keep coming, you keep coming. And that's why we say the good manners makes Allah to always save us, Ya Rabbi don't let my polarity to leave and all of a sudden I repel and I walk away. If you walk away from the shaykh you walk away from Sayyidina Muhammad You walk away from all the tariqah. If shaitan lets us to come in and start exhibiting crazy characteristics you'll be repelled from everything and just out adrift into the abyss of nowhere. So means faith is something delicate and Allah has to continuously dress it and bless it inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.